Hello and welcome to Crown Talk Art in the southwest of England. Uh, this afternoon we're going to have a look at making a little paintbrush rest. This has been inspired by uh, an idea that I saw on good old internet. When I'm glazing pieces I tend to use brushes and what often I find happens is I put the brushes down, they roll together and suddenly I've got glazes mixed together on the paintbrush and I've got to put those to one side and wash them and start all over again. So this is a little rack that I can put my brushes on and it'll keep them in place while I'm working. To this end I've made a little template. It's quite a simple one. We've got, that's going to be the sides, I'll explain why that's in one piece in a moment. A base, a piece to hold the back and a piece to hold the front. And as usual I've already cut these pieces out. So here's my sides, here's my base and my two ends. I haven't had to dry these because it's such a small piece it's not going to be a problem the fact the clay is still quite wet. Somebody once asked on one of my questions what sort of clay we use. We use uh, stoneware clay. Uh, it's a fired clay, mid to high fire clay, um, which means that it's very strong when it's finished. So let's start with working on the two sides. So you see here on the template I've marked where to cut holes. That's a quite a sort of rough idea. I'm going to use straw this big plastic one to cut the holes, but you can use anything. It needs to be something of reasonable size. I did think about using a bottle cap, that you could use that, it would make quite deep indents, uh, or something a little bit smaller. This is probably a little bit on the small side, but we can use it. Before I do that, I need to mark, like I have on the template, I need to mark down the middle. So I'm going to use one of these straight edges, I use my base as it happens. Make sure you can see this as an edge. I'm going to line it up in the middle there, and I'm very, very lightly going to draw a line. Then I'm going to take my straw here and I'm going to start cutting holes. So you don't want to start right on the edge, allow a little bit of gap. Let's turn it again so you can see it better. So I'm going to cut the first hole about two eighths of an inch in. About there, that's a hole. Then I'm going to do the same again, trying to get them reasonably even. And again, I'm hoping to get six, but I don't know whether I'll manage it with this one. I made a prototype, but it was a bit bigger. If you find you've got clay stuck up the end, just get your knife and hook it out. That, that should pull out. Like that, let's carry on. There's another one there. Maybe twelve. How many have we got there? Four? Oh, I don't think I'm going to get six. I think we're going to end here with five. Okay, put that in. Like that. Then having cut those holes, I want to cut down the middle of them. Like so. And that's now going to give me my two sides of my brush rest. And we take the base piece here. I'm going to score up the outside of this, that, get some slip, again somebody asked what this is, this is just bits of clay that we've dropped in a bowl, added a bit of water to to make it liquid, liquidish, and this acts like our glue, so we paint that up there, if you're working in air dry clay you can still do this with this, and again you can make a slip with air dry clay just by adding a little bit of water to it. So now I'm going to take my side, so that's going to be the front, that's the back, so I'm now going to put that in, Again, I'm going to turn it again so you can see what I'm doing, like that, on one side. Okay. Then I'm going to get a little bit of clay, <clears throat> I'm going to make a little sausage, <clears throat> and then start it off in your hands, roll it out nice and gently, the size you want, that paints and slip up that join. That in there, that. And I'm going to use my good old lollipop stick just to smooth it in. We should have put this on a banding wheel so you could see better. But smooth it in to the base, all the way along like that, and then again supporting the side so I don't squash it all the way up the side there. Smooth that in then, my finger. And if you're finding it's a bit rough, clean your fingers. That's one side. Then I get the other side, so make sure that you get it round the right way. Obviously, you don't want to put it 
backwards. I have it high side and this gets the low side. So this one again, I'm going to score up there. Put some slip on it, so it's stick. And put that in place there. Now the one I've done here has made it quite, it's quite a wide one, this one. So for quite big paint brushes, you might find it better. And in fact, I'm just going to make an alteration to this. Instead of having it in the width there, I'm actually going to change it and have my piece on the top there like that. So I'm going to take that off in a minute. So let's fix that one on. I've forgotten that I didn't want this one quite so wide. Again, put some slip up that joint. Up there. Like that. Piece of clay in. A lollipop stick puts it down and up there. Just move it in. Right. That's better. Right. I'm going to take it off the other side, redo it. Just drop that one there. Make sure I can just pull that off. And that. Put it on the top there instead. Okay, so let's put some slip on there. It's still a bit sticky from when I put the other piece on, so it's okay, we can get away with that. You notice they're folding in a bit, and this is why we have the back and the front bars. That's going to hold it all together. Let's put some clay back in there. Put the sausage in there. Fix it all down. So wide. I've taken to using smaller paintbrushes recently, so not this quite as wide as I originally planned. Don't do that. Again, smooth it out. Then we've got the piece that's going to be the back bar, and that's going to fit in. Well, it fits across the back like that to so hold it all together. But again, let's turn it around so you can see. Up to you at this point whether or not you want to have the back bar literally across the back like that. Let's get it straight. Or whether you want to trim it a bit and have it straighten up in between. Okay, so I'm actually going to have it across the back as per the template. So again, I'm going to work out where it's going to go. It's going to go there. So mark it with a little bit of slip. Work it up a bit. Okay. Make sure the pieces are straight when you fix it because this is going to hold everything together so we need to make sure it's right put that on there okay that's our back support so again we now need to fasten it correctly so we're going to, need to put a coil of clay up in there put a slip put a coil in like that Good old lollipop stick, smooth it down onto the back. Again, make sure you support it with your hand, otherwise it'll just push off. And on the side, so make that nice strong join there. And then again on the side, this side as well, make sure it's nice and straight. Bit of slip. In there, like that. And again, join it up. This is where it gets difficult trying to do this video because I'm right-handed and of course <laughs> I need my left hand to support it and I don't want to make it so you can't see what I'm doing. So I have to do a bit of a contortion. Okay, get that in. Again, smooth it off a bit. Again, you can spend a bit more time smoothing this than I'm doing. Let's get it all tidy. Then we get the front bar. We're going to use this to tidy up this across here because that's going to go across the front like that. Again, this does a little bit of support, but it's mainly just for aesthetics at this point. So we're going to put a bit of slip on there, put that in place like that. And then again, a coil across. Let's do it around. I don't know to see, but we're going to put a coil. Get it so you can see it, possibly not, but across the front of the bar here. And get some slip on there. There are many.
many ways you can make this into uh, all sorts of different shapes and forms. You can, uh, if you wanted to, build a little pot at the back to put your brushes in as well. I have my brushes all over the place, so there's no point in me having anywhere to store them with this. I've got some little ones which are kept in a drawer, I've got some bigger ones kicking around. But, uh, okay, so let's smooth that in, tidy it up. And straight and now it's just about neatening it all up so at this point you could across the front bar here put your name on it so these are your brushes you could uh, put a pattern on it do whatever you like I'm just gonna smooth in the, the back and the sides like that make it neater okay and then just to be absolutely sure that it's all gonna fit together properly I'm gonna get the straw that I used earlier and this time I'm just going to put it in. And you see by cutting them all at the same time how that will be level. So I can do that with each one just to make sure that they're nice and round and even. Oops. Make any adjustments if necessary. Okay, so I just need to tidy that top up a bit. And then tidy up my pieces there. So just a little bit of neatening up at the end. Again, if you can't get it neat with your fingers, your fingers need cleaning. And then we have a little brush rest ready for when I come to do some glazing now. I can put my brushes on it and uh, stop them rolling off across around the table. OK, thank you for watching that and uh, I look forward to catching up with you all again. Uh, as per usual, the template to make this will be available on our Etsy page at Crantock Art. Uh, that's all one word on Etsy and a link to the template will also be included uh, in the description underneath this video. OK, thanks very much for watching. See you again soon. Bye.